It's Real 92.3, LA's home for hip-hop, man. You already know. Uh, we are the real After Party Bootleg, Kevin Damage. Special guest in the building, man. This guy is uh, one of the co-founders of... Uh, first of all, this chain is, is distracting I'm just me. A, I'm, a, uh, I'm a mascot at this point for this guy. <laughs> one of the co-founders of the Rolling Loud Festival. As you can see, it's, it's a big deal. The homie Tarek is in the building, man. What's going on, my G? What's up, bro? How you doing, man? What's up, bro? Chilling, dude. I'm ex I'm tired, but I'm excited. Yeah, you should be excited. You kind of like, I mean, shit, man. I've known you since like I don't know, like 2014 or something. Whenever you moved to Tampa for yeah, yeah February 2014. Yeah, I remember I moved to Tampa and it's like, who's doing all these like, who's doing all the ill rap shows in town? And it was this guy, Dope Entertainment. Yeah, that was that's our company in Florida. Yeah, um, and then um, you know, Rolling Loud. Uh, I remember the first year was in Miami and it got rained out and it kind of was like. It was dope, but it definitely was on a smaller scale. Who didn't headlines? get rained out. It rained. It rained. But it, it didn't was, get rained out. Right. The show happened. Well, who, who headlined that year? Schoolboy Q? Schoolboy Q was the headliner on the main stage, and Travis Scott headlined our like second biggest stage. Um, but at the time, Travis was like nowhere near where he's right. at today. It of was course. like Travis on the come up. That was like was what? Crazy. That was like $20,000 Travis, $15,000 Travis. Can you even? I don't think I should. Am I allowed to? Talk I don't know. About I mean, that? it's it's that it's that long ago. I mean, I mean, just it's that like ballpark. You know what I'm right. saying? But like now, it's like pfft. obviously it's fucking nuts now. Um, and then obviously Rolling Loud. Like I think, you know, the year you have Future headline, it was like okay, which was what two years ago? That was the year the before last. The first time we had Future headline was 2016. Right, and I that's the shit I DJ that. Yeah, and then um. The last one in Miami was the one where like it was like okay this shit is yeah. like on this is like the new Rock the Bell shit right here or something but bigger let's be clear be um, clear so yeah man so you know now you're taking it across the country you did one in the Bay Area and now the we're the here world. in L A the world the world the world the world so so talk about how you started doing shows man like how you know for people who don't know you know what was the first show Dope Entertainment booked uh, what kicked all the uh, shit off man the, well the reason we started throwing shows is yeah. because at the time this was 2010 like the hard ticket rap shows didn't really exist like I was a big currency fan this is a case right here currency nobody was booking currency in Florida it's like yo I'm over here bumping all his Stoney Robinson of course and, like fly, th fly than 30,000 feet. Mm -hmm. and all, man, I'm butchering the names of the mixtapes. It's been a while. No, I, I hear you. That's he, my dog. There's like also you know he also has like yeah. 7,000 different no, mixtapes. Yeah, no, but that's my dog. Yeah. Like I'm talking Fly Society days. Mm -hmm. Of course. So um, I wanted to book him. Nobody was booking him. Uh, and there was kids in college that were booking EDM DJs for parties and shit. And I was like, whoa, I could do the same thing they're doing with rappers. How, how did so. you? When you say I can do the same thing, you know, a lot of people want to do what you do, bro. Like this, this became such a huge deal. How, how does that start? Like, how do you start? Like, I'm gonna book them. Like, what is that? I mean, I, I so like the, what happened was I just the revenue you said. Yeah, like you know, it takes money. You back. gotta. I mean, however you could put your chips together, and there's a lot of ways to stack chips. What did you guys oh. start with? Like what? Like the obviously, current was currency the first event? Nah, well, it was supposed to be the first event was supposed to be currency, but then um, that fell through for that time. He ended up being like our second, but the first thing was a Rick Ross after party. Like mm. the opportunity came up that I went to school in Tallahassee. I went to FSU, and FAMU homecoming is like a big weekend. Of course. So there's a big FAMU homecoming uh, uh, arena show, mm -hmm. and it had like Rick Ross, uh, DJ Khaled, Waka Flocka, like. This is 2010. Right, so like makes every sense. like what was popping then, uh, and Rick Ross had like posted on Twitter, back when he had like 200k followers. You know, what I'm saying this is like this is early in the game to me at least. Uh, he it was like Ricky Rose bookings at Gmail for after parties. I was like, yo, let's do a Rick Ross after party. We'll make a killing, man. Did you end up killing it? No, we lost our ass. Um, but shout out Rick Ross. He was awesome. He performed like eight songs and he could have performed zero. But it was, That's dope. It and was then, like basically we got out promoted by the the arena promoter. They were the same promoter as the other nightclub in town. So they, they, um, just, they just said they had everybody over there. Um, what was the first show you guys made made money off? Currency. Of? The, was the, the currency so the like second what, show? When we did what we wanted to do, like right. the first thing we did was like a, a example of learning the the lesson of like don't jump to opportunities mm -hmm. just because they pop up. Like it was like. 
all right, let's go back to the drawing board and do what we wanted to do. We lost a lot of money on Rick Ross. Like, all the money that we made in college just blew it. I can only imagine Ross was getting for an after party back then. So was, it, yeah, it was, like, more than what we were talking about for Travis, like, by a little bit. Yeah, for sure. I can dig that. So currency kind of helped kick 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 the wave off. Um, yeah, man, we sold those shows out. It was sick. That's uh, dope. And you took them all over all over Florida, right? Yeah, in my in my Chevy Tahoe that I still drive today. Word. Yeah, yeah. It's lit. We were just riding around the Tahoe during and during that trip, we had an off day. He flew to L.A. on a red eye to record his verse for Rooftops. Ah, shout out on, on the Rolling Papers mm -hmm. album, and was... then he flew back to do the Miami show. Sold out Club Eve. That's dope. Man. <laughs> that yeah. was a crazy show. And then you um. You know what? What came first? Was it the first Rolling Loud, or what was the joint you tried to do in Tampa downtown with multiple venues? Uh, first Travis was the first Scott. Rolling Loud, and then after that you did uh, what was that shit called? Take Off Landing. Take Off Landing. Yes. Yeah, that was cool. We that was the first it. time I ever saw Puya and Fat Nick. Yeah. That shit was crazy at fucking yeah. Orpheum. Yeah. <laughs> it was at like that was a it cool was at concept. like three p.m. <laughs> yeah, it was the concept was like, yo, you, we're gonna bring. Uh, all these fans down into this part of town, Ybor, Ybor City, yeah. one street that had all these ven has all these venues on it, and it's like let's go show to show, venue to venue. Some mini South by type it was like shit. E every show got a little bigger mm -hmm. until the last one was the biggest one. That's what's up, man. Um, when it comes to doing the festival thing, I feel like there's so much like red tape, and there's just so much shit to tell. Like, what is the biggest pain in the ass about throwing Rolling Loud? Is it the insurance? The police like what is like your biggest headache throwing these damn things mm. <laughs> <laughs> like something came to mind really quick no a lot of things come to mind i mean i'm you sure know, dealing with artists and their agents and maybe? it's something that's becoming really frustrating is all of these guys are so popular mm -hmm. because rap is like the, the number, number one, one genre right now right so then it becomes like a back not this just the set the set time the line placement on the flyer like it's really hard to figure that out with 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 everybody in the game right now like especially if you put it together like i don't know two like two months ago or a month and a half ago and like in a month and a half like and, and then like little pump like a month and a half ago isn't as big as little pump is now like he yeah, might facts yeah like so i mean we've had scenarios where yeah like in in rolling loud in miami flyer comes out in january and then you know lineup changes happen or whatever we dropped the flyer in may someone climbed up like five lines i of think of course you know, who was that uh I don't, uh oh that was that was x oh of course oh, yeah. yeah that's yeah, crazy he climbed up a lot of lines yeah that's crazy. um You've always had, man, like, I'll, I'll give you this, bro. Like, you've always, like, you're, you, like, you saw all this shit before it started popping. All these F Florida kids, man. Yeah. Even, like, <laughs> even, like, I remember seeing 21 Savage for the first time, like, at Rolling Loud. Like, and, you know, I feel like you've. Well, he's not a Florida kid. But, I, but, but I'm yeah. saying, but I said, yeah. even, you know, even, yeah. even, even, like, I just feel like artist. you, um, you've, you've got a hell of a, a eye for talent and for what's next, man. Like, what, what do you attribute to that? And what, I mean, is you the staying team. on SoundCloud or what, it's, what it's, is it? It's the team. It's like my my team. We we just we all listen to different shit, and put it together. But it's, you see it living in Florida. Like when you speak on like what was popping in Florida, like I don't know. We're just a part of it. Oh, 100%. It's hard to explain it. Like we're since we're doing the, we're doing the shows there. We, the kids talk to us. They tell us what they want to hear. And I, and it's also what's it's just naturally percolating to the surface. Mm -hmm. Like we got this dope sound in florida and what's funny is as like the quote-unquote gatekeepers we hear a lot of the trash too like there's a lot of music being made in florida that's like trying to sound like this pop and sound, florida yeah. stuff but that's it's bullshit. like really bad so like but we hear all that sh stuff too and there's a clear difference um um i always feel like where where rock the bells fucked up was they got too ambitious and um you know, I, I think that that kind of was was where they screwed up. And, you know, Rock the Bells was something I went to every year. Same thing with paid dues back in the day. But I felt like when they started trying to do two days and trying to do it all over the country, I felt like it kind of got a little little much. And now we don't have Rock the Bells. Now, you guys are you taking this motherfucker all over the world. Um, the Bay Area was a big success, right? Um, 
I'm sure this thing's gonna sell out or it's close, right? That's always eighty. It's pretty close. It's pretty yeah. close. Get those tickets. What, oh, what, by the time I see this, it's probably... like what are you um what are you uh you know doing to to like like what precautions you guys taking to make sure you guys don't get too ahead of yourselves and end up you know um where where festivals before you have 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 led when yeah, it comes to the hip hop shit. I'm the I'm the same way. I'm the one that's like yo slow down. Let's right. Do less shows. Um, but first of all, uh, shout out Rock the Bells, Gorilla Union. All of course, that. let me in. Like all that stuff, that's great. But I think what happened there is the music chain was in a changing that phase, is, and, yeah. and it, maybe the music didn't land to where where it was going yet. So right. It, they were maybe it was in kind a, of a weird phase. place. Yeah, that is true. Um, but right now it's just very it's like a perfect storm. And of, this is and the, you guys do this like you guys we, were doing we, this on yeah yeah like we kind of it's just a perfect storm of us seeing a niche back when it was currency Mac Miller Wiz like that and that, then evolving that with the niche, niche yeah. of it you know and then it was Flatbush and yeah. the underachievers and all this uh, underground stuff Suicide Boys all, mm -hmm. all everybody all you see you see the progression and what's the point where we talking about <laughs> no I mean I you know I just I'm just, uh, uh, like what do you what do you, like are you worried about being too ambitious your first year mm, my bad uh because we're moving with the sound of the music like i feel like it's a little different like as long as we cater to what, what the, the people of the want kids want in yeah these markets like it's 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 gonna work out like the fact is like hip-hop is the number one genre right now if be, because we know what we're doing and producing a concert where the trusted name people know that they're going to get what they're looking for at, at the show if we produce it so you know there, there's there's the factor of our brand I th there's a, there's a lot of factors that come into play to make it so why'd you guys let, why'd you guys let little b get beat up man oh man what happened man where was security at there buddy for real dude <laughs> nah they're in the video um <laughs> What happened? Did you guys end up not letting the, the dudes perform? Like, the, the, did did the other did PNB or or they the oh they had already, already performed. performed? Oh okay, yeah that was crazy. Tell us about that day. I'm and sorry, man. Uh, what happened? That's all I gotta say. I'm sorry. Like it just they had an altercation. I don't know. They had an altercation. You're yeah. the promoter. Your backstage is hectic. I'm not there when it happened. You're not even there. I'm I'm somewhere else dealing with something else. How, how does that? make you feel you know being that you, you work so hard to put something together this is your blood sweat and tears and, you know certain situations like that you'll happen. never be able to control yeah um does that you feel like that affects the brand of rolling loud at all or is, is that you know how does that make you how does that make the brand feel you you, uh, you can't look at it as like chinks on your armor like it's mm -hmm. it's more so just like shit's gonna it's a rap show man yeah you know rap shit's gonna happen y you're in the field it's stuff stuff's gonna pop off from time to time um but you have to try to have an, the type of environment where it can only get so bad you know we're checking for weapons um all that shit. Know, it as quick as it happened as, is as quick as it ended has there ever been a diffused situation that we never heard about that's oh, happened yeah, back, backstage yeah, yeah. can you give us an example it's just like, of something it's, i've had a, a altercation on stage uh in miami where it was like in the back of the stage and two different artist crews like through a misunderstanding like it was like a, someone asked like another one's cameraman to move and it was like don't touch it and then it was like almost a, it was almost on stage <laughs> yeah but our security company like did a really good job of like jumping in and being like yo relax it's okay like they knew who was who. Right, like, right, right. They, like tactically knew which crew was whose people and they freaking move that stuff do, do you ever get heckled by security at your own event i roll i ride happened? with a security guard okay yeah because you know security sometimes is too tight but it's, it's your thing and yeah you have to have proper credentialing you know like, yeah, there always. have to be different levels of wristbands and passes and access walk in and wristband, do you? um well, I wear a I wear a certain pass. We call it a fuck you pass. Oh. The fuck you pass. <laughs> yeah. Um. But on top of that, like my face is pretty gated. Like everybody that works at our event, they should like, know. Well, they I think they receive like a pamphlet right. with like certain people's faces. Like they would get all the artists' faces because they don't all listen to rap. Of course. 
I put on events, man, myself, where security didn't let me in. So. Well, you have to properly advance your event. You have to make it, is now that you know for your next event, you have to walk in there in your pri- in your prior meetings and your communications, be like, look, let's share this space. I, I don't want problems, first of all, and so that's a thing, you know, so it's one of those things you got to cover. Yo, for uh, up-and-coming promoters, let's say some kid's in fucking Wyoming right now with 10 racks in his bank account and he wants to throw a concert, what's some advice you could give him? Um... Whoever's whoever you think's gonna move tickets in your market. What's the um, first step? Like like, you know, because I feel like it's so hard to give people money sometimes. <laughs> like, man, oh. the first step is to lightly study the business at least a little bit. Try to get a basic understanding of the ins and outs of like what you do to you know right. secure a venue and book the talent. And then find, uh, like, a contact email on someone's Twitter bio or some shit. Yo, honestly, like, that's how it starts. Mm-hmm. It was like, yo, we're, Spit a who? Oh, Musa? Oh, Shout so I got to talk to Musa? All right. You know? At that time, Spitta was tweeting, like, for bookings, hit Musa. Right. Like, and adding at, adding Musa. And, and so then, you like, just, all right, I'm going to hit him on Twitter. Twitter, and, like, he had an email in his <laughs> right. bio. And it's like, Shoot email him an that. email. Get it done. Yeah. Um, you, you guys are taking it to Japan, too, right? Yeah, Ooh, the that's crazy. Japan, um, Hong Kong. There's like a there's developments in the overseas plans as far as it's a it's like more markets than we originally. So said Japan we and Hong Kong are for sure. I don't want to say ex- any details on the overseas markets, but it's a, it's like more of them and def but definitely Japan and Japan is and, is, and I think it's Hong Kong, but, but I, Japan's I've, for sure happening because I saw you yeah, guys announce yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And China was on there, which is Hong Kong. That's crazy. When you guys book over there, like, and then even, even cause like, obviously there's probably some people y'all would book on the Miami shit that you wouldn't book on the San Bernardino show and vice versa. Like, and you guys are from Florida. So like, which artist do you think, you know, like to kind of tap into the, cause I saw you guys had SOB RBE in the Bay, which, you know, they they got a crazy movement yeah. going on out there, but like, you know, is, is it, is it, market to market you know do you guys try to study who's moving in 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 any in each market kind of in a similar way to what you guys were doing in miami yeah you have to i mean you have to have integrity for in each market you can't just bring like the same lineup everywhere so we'll have to evolve and part of evolving is with the locals um so you when we're over there like our shout out our homies at ada rising Mm -hmm. like they're the plug for a lot of our uh the, the stuff going mm-hmm. on in asia and um in england you know you got skepta you got I, i'm a personal big fan of dizzy rascal yeah dizzy rascal's been a been uh, the man for years i don't know if he's still popping over there but i think it would be respected to book him i need to talk to them yeah he's um, an og fire. yeah uh but so wherever you go you got to respect the locals but you also got to bring them that sound that they want to See that isn't from there too. True. You know? Who's your dream headliner, man? Like if you could pick like, the dr- like dead like, or alive? <clears throat> hmm? dead no, or alive? no, alive, alive. alive. Like, let's really. make it. <laughs> is it is it is it, uh, is it Kanye? I uh, I have to pick one. I mean, that's like, not let's, fair because then say, the other one's gonna get. Me. It's Drake or Kanye. Drake or Kanye. Those are the two. Because we already booked Wayne, so like True. now I'm like, do I booked Wayne twice and I want to book him more and more? And more. It, bro, he's the best. He's so good to work with. He has a great team. And he's and, fucking dope live. And he's my favorite rapper ever. And he's the best. And thank you, Cortez. Thank you. So Wayne and Drake. Or uh, Drake and Kanye Bro, would so be there. I'm so starstruck like, by Wayne. Like all the other rappers, like I can get through like a simple conversation. Like, because I mean, we all started as fans with this shit, you know? Yeah. But with the other rap, like with everybody else, to a certain degree, I'm able to conduct myself properly. Just be like, thank you. Bye. You know, without stay out of their way. With Wayne, I was like, hi, uh, I'm, I'm your biggest fan. <laughs> Thank you so much for playing my festival. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Don't don't mind me. I'm just going to be wilding out on the side of the stage. Dude, over I was freaking out. Just, oh my God. He's the best. You guys made the, uh, what was it, the Billboard, like, was it the, the, the Billboard 30 under 30 list? <sighs> no. I, or what I was the list? You know, you made, y'all made I some fucking list. I never made a list like that. That'd be tight. Uh, but it was the Hip Hop Power Players. The Hip Hop Power oh, Players nice. list. Yeah, yeah that's right. HHPP. Yeah. Yeah. That and that was the that was the issue with Top Dog on the cover, right? Yeah, Top Dog yep. and Kendrick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was that like, man? Getting that news? I wish I could say I was at like a photo shoot with Top Dog and Kendrick, <laughs> but nah, we weren't. Um, it was crazy. Um, 
basically, I, I think it was our, our publicist hit us up like, yo, Billboard's doing this issue and they want you to be a part of it. I think that's how, that's how it went down. That's and crazy. I was like, yo, yeah, that's Run an that honor. Shit. Let's do it. I mean, I, it's everything I ever dreamed of. I started booking shows because I just wanted to get in the, into the music industry. Well, you know, you've been doing it the right way. There was, I remember when I first got to Tampa, there were some janky ass promoters out there, boy. It was rough. And then I met y'all and I was like, these guys, shout out Vibe Nation, man. Janky as no. motherfuckers alive, bro. No, man. Hold on, man. <laughs> I, you know, I don't want to throw dirt on anybody. No, 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 no. But, you know, I just, yeah. I remember that festival. What was that festival they come, did out come there? Come on, man, stop. Anyway, uh, but but you guys always did shit the right way, man, and it's crazy because like I feel like you know it it, it kind of uh you know it, it kind of shows, man. If you if you if you got your ear to the streets and you do good business, <sighs> we man. just we try to operate with integrity. And if we ever do, if we ever falter, I'm I'm gonna say I'm sorry and try to do better. Now you, know you guys obviously got a shit ton of you know these lineups you guys are producing are fucking insane. Yeah. Uh, I'm assuming, like, you guys got investors involved, or is this strictly just you and Matt's bread that you guys have no. been stacking? Because, I mean, fuck, man. Yeah, me and Matt are rich as Nah, nah. Um, it's like, there are ways, you know, when you put your head to put pencil to paper and think about things, there's ways to get capital. 100%. So we got capital sources. And um, I would you know, love to know. Just some you know, of part ways. of expansion is like partners, the local partners yep. have have involvement in finances. Um, you know, but so I can't totally give right. a, but can't give away the, the secret. You, you find can't give your away way too to much get of the capital. Sauce. Yeah, you know 100%. what I'm saying? Partly, part my sauce is how how we get our capital. But go, you can get your capital somewhere. Talk about this fucking chain that this guy's got on, man. This thing is wearing it proud. It looks like a. I don't want to speak. First of all, it's really, like a, it's really fucking heavy. Is, it is. Yeah, it is really is actually, heavy. Like um, it's, that ain't no middle of the mall riffraff jewelry right there. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it, it's our it's the the Rolling Loud L A artist chain or SoCal, I guess I should say. Right. This is just for SoCal. Yeah. So in the Bay, they got one that was like Bay Area more. It looked like the Warriors it, logo. I've seen kind that because people walking around with yeah. it was like yeah. Like, and in Miami, <laughs> in, in Miami, it was the first time we had the idea, so we just did like the logo, like it's my chain, big as fuck. Yeah, but big. Um, and this is the LA one. Yeah. So all the headliners are gonna get chain. this chain. I've never had a Correct. chain like this. Nice. Anybody who's on the lineup was XXX on this lineup. Yes. And so obviously he's not gonna be able to make the show. Correct. So when something like that happens, I'm, I mean it probably happens often. Um, when, yeah, in Miami, you know, we lost um, Kodak and. Oh, yeah. um, who else pulled off? Kevin Gates. Um, so, so, so we, what we ended up doing then was we booked. Uh, was it run the jewels? We booked YG and um, Gucci and Gucci. Oh yeah. wow! So, with, like the X X X thing, I'm sure you know everybody kind of saw that this was a possibility that was going to happen. Um, really? Yeah. It, but it was fast, you know. Well, we're working on it. You guys are going to try to pull 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 something out to. I mean. In LA, I mean, you know, he's popping, but I mean, I'm sure there's there. You no know, one's gonna ask for a refund. Uh, the beauty is, we are in Southern California. A lot of artists live, live here. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. Anybody you won't ever book again? Even if I, I had an answer for that, I wouldn't throw them under the bus like that. I would want to mess up their money or their family. Like that's this what this is what we're doing for a living. No, I could dig that. I respect that. Um. Who's but, your favorite? How about this? But who, some people's teams suck, dude. Like, yo, get a new team, bro. Who is your favorite artist? Some people's teams are the best. That's what I'm asking. Who's who's got the best team? Um, who's your favorite artist to book? I I actually don't book him very often, but the homie G Easy, yeah, his shout team, out his team, Matt and Juice are well, like. Well, didn't you really and Matt go to high point. school or some shit? Yeah, me and Matt went to um went to high school together for a few years. When I lived in New Mexico, um, got the best team, home. man. Shout out to G. Yeah, but as far as like for Rolling Loud, um, man, a, a lot of these guys got great teams. Like uh, Coach K has a great team over at QC um, for all his artists. Uh, TDE has uh, is just super like, organized. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, working with TDE, it becomes a TDE show, um, but in a good way. You know, they right. they get it done. Mm -hmm their way because their way is how it's got to be for to have the best show which is kendrick you know 100 um 
like like we said earlier, you you always kind of got your ear to what's next, man. Besides, uh, you know, Wi Fi's funeral, who you you manage. Yeah. Um, I have to be careful not like shamelessly plugging him too much. Like people ask me, like, all right, so what's like, what do you think? Who's the biggest? Or what do you? Well, what's for, your for, favorite? He's, a, he's obviously really but, like, dope. But don't let that. No, don't let artist. it fool. Like Wi Fi. Yeah, free, he free out for us. Yeah, yeah, he's you know fucking good. Saying? And he's hot out here. He like, is he's hot. selling tickets. Yeah. And he's touring. And he's selling merch. And I remember that first tour. It was like what Rob Banks and, and him and I remember he was on the road hitting me like yo Kev we gonna be in AZ yeah dude I, I used to drive and stuff that shit's like, I crazy I used to drive the van and but, but who's next that. like who do you got your eye on who are you who do you think is, is the next wave hmm. cause right now you know Little Pump got it the, the, the uh seemed like this dude with the rainbow hair got got a what's his name I like Trippy Red Trippy Red. Trippy's dope, though. No, nah, no, nah, we already know about Trippy Red. Nah, you, you, you know the, the <laughs> no, next. I was just responding okay, to what you. Okay, just but, said. but who, 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 who's like next, bro? Like, who's, who's fucking that we might not have heard of? Um, We've already had Trippy Red up here. Who am I listening to that nobody else is listening to? Oh man, yo, the homie from I, I really like Danny right now, man. Danny, Danny Towers. Towers. All right. Honestly, and that's not biased, man. Yo, there's this dude that Mask Gorilla tweeted about that's mm -hmm. hard. Um, this dude like Dav. Dav. Nobody knows about him yet. And then I follow Mask Gorilla, and he's like, yo, I found this artist. If he's going to blow up, I swear. And I've never seen him anywhere else, but he, I listen to him. Like, he's fine. Oh, he's like really good. And then you're also, I mean, obviously we talked about you managing Wi-Fi's funeral. You also manage um, Henry still, right? Yeah. He just Dope got a, another, another placement, placement on G's, G's, G's album. album. Um for for aspiring managers, what are some advice you'd give on that side of of the the table? Oh man, I'm like not even a very good manager. I feel like like there's so many better managers than me. But the advice I would give is like learn the game as fast as you can. Like try to soak it up from other managers. I had the blessing of watching managers operate from the promoter. From the promoter like, side I'd work of with them, yep. so I'd watch how they operated with me. So I at least knew how to operate in the touring sector. So right. like. In that space, I'm like the best manager. Of course, I know all about that. You know all of that shit but from then, every like, angle. Label deals, it was like all new to me. The first couple label type situations I've been into, but now I've been in a few. It's lit, so. man. Well, look, we appreciate you coming through. Rolling yes. Loud is yeah, Sunday. We're actually broadcasting loud. our show Sunday from there. That's awesome. So we're gonna be backstage, man. Rolling Loud, Rolling Loud, be there Rolling all Loud. Weekend. It's lit. It's lit. Everybody, get your motherfucking tickets. Let's sell this bitch three. out. Let's yeah. sell this bitch out, baby. It's Real 92.3. Let's go.